But if you got your Bibles, turn with me to Revelations 14. But I want to start down in verse 5. We left off in verse 4 where it says, These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being first fruits unto God and to his Lamb. We discovered that when it talks about women, it's not saying that these cannot be married. Some have preached that, taking the scriptures literally, naturally, trying to interpret them with the carnal mind. And so there are those that preach that if you're going to be a part of this 144,000, you've got to be celibate. Like the priests in the Catholic Church. You cannot have a wife. You cannot have that kind of a relationship. But that's not what the scriptures are talking about. The book of Revelation is done in symbol. To understand the book of Revelation, you must understand the rest of the Bible. Because there are symbols used throughout Scripture that if you don't know them, you can't interpret what's in this book. That's why the Holy Ghost is so important. Because He brings His Word back to our remembrance so that we can compare spiritual things with spiritual things. How many would agree the Word of God is a spiritual thing? So to understand it, you must compare it with spiritual things. In other words, you must allow the Bible itself to interpret the Bible. When the Holy Ghost brings scriptures back to your remembrance to compare with what you're reading or studying or hearing preached, that's when you begin to learn that the Bible has its own language. If you don't know the language, you won't understand what he's saying. And so there are those who are not content to follow just what they've been taught in their denominations. But they've learned to hear the voice of God. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they'll not follow. There are those who, when God brings scripture to the remembrance... And they compare it with the scripture they're reading. And God begins to open up the eyes of their understanding. They have the courage to believe what they're reading, what they're receiving. And if it goes against what they have been traditionally taught in their denomination, they follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. They do not limit themselves to the denomination they're in. And so the 144,000, the government of God that he's establishing in the earth, these are they that follow the Lamb whithersoever they go. And he goes, and they will not be defiled with women. Church systems, denominations. We went into Revelation 17 last week, and we talked about Mystery Babylon. How the Mystery Babylon was... A denomination, the first denomination, the Roman Catholic Church. Men begin to follow their own intellect, formulate their own doctrines. And let me tell you, they did. They compared Scripture with pagan teachings. And they would mix the two together. They would form councils and whatever the majority would vote upon, that would become the policy of their church. And the priests would have to teach what they decided in their councils. If they didn't, then they would be excommunicated. They would be called heretics. Those that would try to divide the church. But nevertheless, God raised up those who would follow the Lamb whithersoever He goes. They would not defile themselves with that church system. 
So the first denomination was the Roman Catholic Church. And in the beginnings, only the priests were allowed to read the Scripture. That's convenient. Because only the priests would be initiated into its sacred secrets. But how many know Jesus said, it's given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. If you're a disciple, what's a disciple? A student, an apprentice, one who is disciplined and learning. Amen? Amen. And that category is out there for anyone who will allow him to come in and teach him. Now God in his foreknowledge knows those who will follow him. Can somebody say amen? See, God is sovereign. He chooses. But how do you know whether you're chosen? If there's something in you that causes you to follow. How many hear me? It's not in everybody. But the only way you know is how you respond to the Word of God. Oh, praise the Lord. Because how many know God doesn't tell us everything? Can somebody say amen? I'm afraid there are no, in the kingdom, there are no spiritual know-it-alls. God always has something we still don't yet understand. Amen? Amen? And so the Roman Catholic Church was the first denomination. But every move of God that came out of it did the exact same thing and duplicated that order. They may not have taught the same doctrines. They may not have did the same rituals. But how many know they still did the same principle? They begin to follow the intellect of man instead of following the leadership of the Spirit. And they limited God to what was previously taught. These are the daughters of the great whore. Now, some people don't like to think of their church system as being a whore. That's a strong language. But how many know God is our husband? We are to receive seed. Somebody say his word. We're to receive seed from him. Now it does come through preaching. It comes through teaching. But it's when the Holy Ghost brings it back to your remembrance. When you can study the book and understand it yourself. Out of what's being taught. Yes. That's when you know you're beginning to hear God. And, when you, and faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. And when you hear the word of God, it is seed and it is re reproducing his life in you. You start acting like Him. You start becoming like Him. You start thinking like Him because that Word is reproducing Him in you. But if you are receiving from human intellect, if you are just going by what you were taught, you believe that what you believe, well, you know, that's what my mother always believed. That's what my grandmother always believed. You know, may, if they were believing the truth, that's fine. But what if they were just going by what they were taught and never studied the Word of God for themselves? Then you may be leaving a lie thinking you're believing the truth. And what's duplicated in your life may not be Him. In fact, in most denominations, it isn't. Because in every denomination, there is. They all have one thing in common. They believe we stay sinner, sinners. Hello? They believe we stay sinners. We were sinners. We had no ability to measure up to the law, to measure up to his standards. So we would transgress the law by our behavior. Can somebody say amen? amen. 
The flesh is not capable. But when the word, the real word of God comes into us and we begin to believe the word of God that the old man that we were was crucified on Calvary's cross and that his life had come into us and that his life is now the person that we are, the new us. How many know he has the ability not only to line up to everything that's contained into the law, not only to line up to everything that is, that, that is his standard, but we have the want to to do it. Yes. We find it's becoming our will. Yes. We begin to find we're beginning to think like he thinks and not the way the rest of the world thinks. Now, there's good people out there in the denominations, and most of them do accept God's forgiveness through what Jesus did on the cross. But he did more than provide for the forgiveness of sin. He, he made it possible that we could be reproduced and be like him. Amen. The Bible does not say today we're a sinner. Today it says we're a new creature. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Scripture says, as he is, so are we in this present world. He is not a sinner, so we are not a sinner. Does that mean we don't have the capacity to sin? Yes, we have the capacity to sin, but we're no longer the sinner. It's no longer our nature or desire to do that anymore. It is still programmed in the mind. It is still, the flesh is still tempted, but we find there's a whole nother part of us that does not desire those things. And if we identify with that one, how many know we have the power to bring sin completely underneath our feet? Yes. Oh, hallelujah. We are not sinners saved by grace anymore. We were sinners saved by grace. But if we're saved by grace, we are rescued from that and we become a new creature. Bible says that we are the righteousness of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Now those that follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth, they go, it's not just going beyond what, the, what their denominations taught them, no longer just being defiled by the sins of their denomination. And what is the sins of their denomination? Blaspheming the others. Yep. The word blaspheme means to vilify. And if I vilify someone else, because they don't understand what I understand. See, I'm coming against the denominational systems. I'm not coming against the people. How many can hear that? There's a big difference. There are people in denominations that have a relationship with the Lord and they accept people in other denominations even though they don't necessarily believe everything alike. And they're not vilifying them because they're not what they are. But the denominational systems teach, at least some of them, if you're not Church of Christ, you're not saved. There's only one church mentioned in the Bible, and it's the Church of Christ. They'll show you the scripture about the Church of Christ, and therefore if you're not Church of Christ, you're not part of the church, you're not saved. Well, the Baptists say the only church in there is the Baptist church. Because how do you join the church, the denomination? Usually you're baptized. So Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, making him a Baptist. That really is a joke. <laughs> but that mentality is still there. How many can see what I'm saying? Pentecostal churches preach against each other because of their doctrinal understanding. If you are united Pentecostal and you've been baptized in Jesus' name, you've got the Holy Ghost, you speak in tongues, then you're saved. If you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, if you were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, honey, you're lost. you got to be re-baptized. Well, I baptize in Jesus' name. I, we had a baptism. I explained all that. But honey, 
If you're baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, you're still being baptized in the name of Jesus because He is the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. So we're not going to divide over the words that were said over you. 